Thank you very much, uh, uh, Valentina. For me, it's a, good, a great pleasure to be here in this workshop because, as you mentioned before, I come from Spain, a country that is facing some of the most acute demographic challenges in Europe. And believe me, this is not a way of speaking because according to a recent study of the Bank of Spain, 42% of the municipalities in Spain could disappear. So very happy to be here in this presentation of those two reports that can have a very positive impact in the populated areas and for sure will help us in our work in the parliament. Um, going back to, you, to your question, um, the first thing I could like to stress is that the EU has radically changed uh, its approach towards this problem. I think now all institutions are aware that Together with the Green Deal and the digital transformation, the demographic challenge can mark the future of Europe. And the future, the, the studies that you presented today and Paola mentioned uh, before, there is a clear link between depopulation and laws of political engagement that leads also to anti-European feeling. And how I see it, if the population feels alienated from politics, feels it has no opportunities, it will move toward extremes. So that's why tackling the population is a matter of survival for the EU, as I see it. Um, in order to the EU to thrive, the EU has to be useful. And if we want a cohesive and sustainable and a fair Europe, we cannot uh, let rural areas die. We have to react. And le that leads me to my second point. Because now, Valentina, we have the framework to act. Um, when I arrived to the parliament two years ago, I managed to become, as you mentioned, uh, the rapporteur of the ERDF uh, and cohesion funds regulation. And um, for me, it was a priority that the impact of these funds would also be transferred to disadvantaged areas, and especially to depopulated areas. And um, it was clear uh, that the first step to combat the population was to define it. And now the new text of the ERDF establishes a definition of areas affected by a demographic challenge that is closer to the reality of most regions in the EU, as you mentioned before. And this is an important change. Um, and I have to say, I could not have done alone. I want to thank the Committee of the Regions for the support to include this amendment in the regulation. So thank you very much. Um, once defined what is the, uh, uh, the uh, disadvantaged area, the regions and the central governments have to map out the priorities, areas for action, and to establish integrated plans to tackle the population from its different angles and aspects. And of course, later you have to measure the evolution of, of and the impact of the actions implemented. So now we have this framework. And my third point is closely linked to the amendment. The population is not a single problem. It cannot be solved with isolated policies, which is why it is so important that, uh, uh, that the amendment, just like the studies you mentioned, you, you presented today, encourage member states and regions and local entities to have an integrated approach, an holistic approach. Um, it takes me to my last point, that it's crucial that these plans are established and defined with a bottom-up approach and in an inclusive way. So we have, and we must, we are the voices of the citizens. Plans have to be linked to the specific conditions of the territory. And the study presented here today are proof of the shift at EU level, but now we need the regions to follow. So now we have the operational programs of, of the ERDF, uh, now that they are drafted, it is the moment to act. So let's make sure that we use uh, this great opportunity and please uh, make sure that the European Parliament support you in, and the regions uh, on your effort to tackle this problem. We are here to, to your disposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have seen from uh, Catalina's message, also Enrique's message, that there is a big need to support 
territories that are feeling left behind. They, they, they feel left behind. There's a bigger geography of uh, discontent uh, in these places, uh, also coming out uh, uh, with discontent towards the European Union. So what can we do from your point of view to improve uh, the use of cohesion policy in the next programming period? What can we do to ensure that territorial tools are uh, used in, in the best and effective way possible? And so we ensure that no one is left behind from your point of view. Really very quickly, like two minutes each one, maybe Susanna Solis can start. Okay, I will try to be, uh, to be brief. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, stress the importance of having synergies between the recovery funds and the structural funds, because most of the municipalities and of the regions of the, uh, and of the countries are more focused on the uh, recovery funds, on the, on the next generation fund. And we have to make sure that cohesion funds still have the potential to bring change to the European regions and special, especially to disadvantaged areas. So that is the, the first thing. Uh, and for that, we have to be prepared because now there is going to be an overlapping of funds that will require a great administrative, administrative uh, capacity. And uh, we have to be sure that we build these capacities. Um, on the other hand, um, I would like uh, uh, I am going to. Uh, I would like to. I think the first step also will have to have a comprehensive strategy, followed by projects that have a transformative potential, because only with good ideas, sound and viable projects, a methodology to implement them as and KPIs to measure the progress, we will manage to see change in these areas. Um, within the EU, uh, there are great examples of areas that have transformed economies and have managed to, to fix populations. So we should take advantage of all that knowledge. We also need to set up networks of support between European regions to have an exchange of best practices. And we need to invest, as I mentioned before, in capacity building. Um, and the institutions already provide very good services, but let's ensure that the affected regions knows about them. And finally, I think it is important to have a multi-level approach because I said, as I said before, what works in a region might not work on another region. So let's make sure there are effective channels to communicate with citizens and bring implicated actors on board. And for, one thing, include youth, because the, she mentioned it before. And last week, I sponsored a group of rural entrepreneurs uh, to the European Youth event in Strasbourg. And I heard firsthand their great ideas and their willingness to transform the regions because they want to stay and have a future there. So these are the people we have to talk to, also youth people. Rural and lonely places have a big untapped potential. So let's see the conditions to guarantee their development uh, are clear. And I, I did it very briefly because I would like to have time for the rest of the. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. 